can see him. Oh, see you can see him. Just over 24 hours after he brought fear to the streets of Birmingham, Walk downstairs. Zephaniah McLeod was arrested by armed police. He'd gone out in the early hours armed with a knife and chose eight victims at random. The first man he stabbed managed to run away. 20 minutes later, he struck again. After stabbing a third victim, he put his knife down a drain and took a taxi four miles home. But there, he rearmed himself and headed back to the city centre. His next victims were best friends, Jacob Billington and Michael Callahan. He's losing a lot of blood from the neck. Is he breathing and conscious? He's conscious. Okay. Not really, he's losing consciousness. Right. McLeod calmly walked away as Jacob lay dying. He'd been on a night out to celebrate a friend's birthday. I can still see him leaving the house with the lads in the car outside, beeping the horn to get him to hurry up. <laughs> and he skipped out and we just thought he was going for a, you know, a lovely night out with his friends. We just got a knock on the door from the police in the very early hours. It was absolutely awful. Um, I could, I could bre you feel like you had all the breath sucked out of you is the best way you can describe it. There were just no words to kind of describe the kind of sadness that I felt like sadness doesn't even do it justice, you know. This is someone who I've shared my life with. Jacob's friend, Michael, survived, but only just. He spent more than six months in hospital, and some of his injuries will be permanent. But he was determined to be at court to see his friend's killer jailed. Jacob Billington was the best of us, and Zephaniah McLeod is a liar and a murderer. His mother says McLeod should never be released. not answered any questions. He's not talked about it. We don't know anything about why he did what he did. Um, how can anybody say he's safe again? I don't think anybody can. McLeod has paranoid schizophrenia. These weren't his first offences. He told a string of professionals that he hears voices that tell him to hurt people. And yet he was released from prison in April 2020, the height of the first wave of the pandemic, with no mental health support. He was, the judge said, simply lost in the system. The warning signs missed. Jacob's family want to know why. You know, the fact that he didn't appear to have been monitored in the way that you would imagine he would, as somebody who was known to be dangerous and had a long previous history of being dangerous. A serious case review is looking at why people knew he was a threat, yet nothing was done until it was too late. Becky Johnson, Sky News, Birmingham.